wonderful good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here much, at the technical forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries this year in 2015 at the Hanover Fairground. Every 15 minutes you'll hear interesting presentations regarding the hydrogen and fuel cell industry. At this moment I would like to invite you all to come and have a seat, enjoy, relax. All the drinks are in the house. There is a lovely lady here walking around serving you with complimentary drinks. Also at this time, I would like to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, maybe good night to all our online guests. We are live streaming from the fair, not only 150 exhibitors from 24 different countries, we also have people from all over the world watching us at this moment. I'm very excited to present to you the next um, topic, which is by air bearings, we'll discuss the high-speed solution for our fuel cell blowers and what that is, will the European sales manager of Westwind Air Wings explain to you. Please welcome with me on stage Mr. Simon Deck. Thank you very much and good afternoon to you all. So I think air bearings are a little bit different to everything else we've seen going through this week. I'm very lucky that our stand is just over in the corner there, so I've had a chance to watch everybody up here, and I can tell you that my knees are knocking now that I'm here. Um, this afternoon I'm going to tell you a little bit about West Wind, uh, what we do, and how we believe we could have a solution uh, with our air bearings for the future in fuel cells as blowers and air management and movement. So Westwind have been going for over 50 years. Uh, we started in the UK. Uh, we have a factory in Poole in Dorset, which is very close to the south coast and close to Gatwick Airport and London Heathrow. And we're owned now by a, we are a division and we're owned now by a company in America, GSI. And GSI have lots of other functions. They have a laser system function. They have lots of other divisions with motion control. And we are a segment of that business. So, Westwind in the UK, we have a manufacturing facility. Um, we fluctuate with staff, with contract staff, we're around about 110 permanent. And when the business is busy, we have more people coming in. We have new machine facilities there. And we also have a facility in China. And this is in the Suzhou Industrial Park. And this carries out a lot of our manufacturing, high volume manufacturing, certainly in the printed circuit board industry. So this is just a few photos of uh, our world-class facilities. We have a lot of machining centers, a lot of Studer grinders that we need to hold the accuracy on the shafts that we're grinding. And we have a lot of test facility for testing our air bearings when they're fully built um, and just before they go to the customer. So what does an air bearing look like? Now that's a, a very good question. I mean, depending on the application, they're very widespread in their form, fit, and format. This one here in particular is a high-speed PCB spindle, but they're built up, the aerostatic side is built up in a, in a similar kind of way. So here we have an aerostatic uh, bearing system. This one happens to be a high-speed PCB spindle that would normally operate at about 180,000 RPM. And with an air bearing of this type, we have two journal bearings that are supporting the shaft, and we also have an axial bearing at the far end that keeps the shaft into position. And that style of makeup is the same for pretty much every um, aerostatic spindle that we make. You can see the small arrows just coming in here are where the air would enter through the journal bearings, or the radial bearing as they're called, supporting the shaft. And with a motor in the center, that obviously once that's energized, is allowing the shaft to rotate. So here are a few examples of aerostatic bearings. These are two large journal bearings that we have. And this is just showing a cross section of how the air enters into the bearing and forms the gas film that we're using to support that shaft within the bearing itself. At the bottom here, we have a, uh, an axial bearing. This is a thrust bearing from a high speed spindle. And it's the same kind of principle. Small jets uh, pushing air into the area that's supporting the shaft axially in its position. 
So the other type of air bearing that we have and we're demonstrating on our stand at the moment is an aerodynamic spindle. Now this, this type of spindle is, is different in the way that it doesn't need compressed air to float the shaft um, or the rotor in its air film. It basically produces its air film once the shaft is running. So this application is very good. Uh, sorry, this spindle is very good um, for certain types of application where you don't have the ability to give compressed air. So we have quite a few of these in the field. It's proven technology. We used to use it on some of our scanning uh, spindles that used to support quite heavy optics. And we've introduced it here at the show with a blower at the front of it just to show how the technology works. And you can see that on our stand. Just to give you a little idea of the kind of tolerances that we're working to, the outer circle that you can see here is representing a human hair, the size of a human hair. Obviously, if you have a few grey ones like me after this presentation, it might be a little bit thicker, but currently that's what we're representing there. So the radial air bearing clearance is normally about 12 microns, and to give you an idea of a micron, we have this little dot here. This is a particle of cigarette smoke and a particle of dust. So it's very tight tolerances that we need to hold when manufacturing this type of bearing. So the air bearing advantages, we have very high speed rotation. I mean, currently in our printed circuit board world, we're running to about 370,000 RPM. We have low vibration because we're supporting this shaft uh, in a very good air film. We have high rotational accuracy. This is quite uh, key for a lot of the applications that we do, certainly for the printed circuit board drilling, where we have very small drills that we need to position accurately within the board. Uh, low friction and drag and heat generation. Um, that comes from the fact that the whole system is pretty much frictionless. You're floating in air, which is probably a nice feeling. High stiffness long lifetime and zero contamination to the process. So genuine air bearing applications, this is the bit that a lot of the engineers love because there's so many different applications for air bearings where you can use them in different ways and, and bring out the benefits that an air bearing gives you. So here is just a, a few examples. This is the printed circuit board drilling. So Westwind entered into this market many years ago now, and probably the production and the, and the jump from the speeds we were at to the speeds we're currently at has accelerated a lot of the technology that you have now. Certainly, the miniaturization of tablets and mobile phones wouldn't have progressed quite as quickly as it had without this technology jumping from where we were at 120K to standard mainline production of 200K. And as we're in Germany, we have a nice German drilling machine here, and uh, as the Carlsberg advert says, that's probably the best drilling spindle in the world. General aerostatic industrial applications, this is where we ramp up the size of, of our spindles with regards to the size of their loadings, what they're capable of doing, so they're much bigger spindles. So we have some spindles that are used for uh, material dicing. We do a lot of hard material dicing. We have electrostatic spraying, so cars. We have a lot of electrostatic sprayers here in Germany spraying all different types of cars. And that's also used in the food industry. It can be used for coating batteries, anything that you need to spray electrostatically. And glass grinding is another application that we have, and that's come on board a lot more recently because obviously a lot of the phones and tablets are now harder material glass, and they need to be machined very accurately with bezels and small holes. Um, so that's another application that's, that's very good for us. So where did we get to? Uh, general aerostatic industrial applications. So uh, the blower that we're showing on the stand at C34 is based around the polygon scanning system that we used to have. This bearing's been proven for many years. Uh, we use it in the laser world. Um, what we're doing now is obviously uh, fitting a blower onto it to prove the concept of, of moving air. Other things we do is silicon wafer notch grinding, and we also do some micro-machining. And obviously, we also have some big spindles. It doesn't really show how big this spindle is, but it's taller than me, and it weighs 300 kilograms. And I would certainly look a different shape if I was 300 kilograms, so 
that's a really good spindle and that's doing a lot of grinding process. So now we get onto the bit that the engineers feel is really sexy. They came to the show last year, they had a look at the fuel cell technology and we still believe currently that the way that air is moved within the fuel cell isn't particularly efficient. So we're looking at ways that perhaps we can introduce air bearings to make something more efficient in this world. And so when the technicians come here, they look around and see how the market is moving. So we have specific benefits with the blower that we're showing on the stand. And if you have a chance to walk past C34, please go and have a look at it. It's an aerostatic product, so it runs up and produces its own air film. And as we know, in fuel cell, currently there's a lot of low it has low parasitic losses because anything you strap to the fuel cell is taking energy. So we have low parasitic losses because it's a very frictionless system. We also have very accurate rotation. So this means that we can optimize the tip clearance of our impeller. So we can run very, very close and get the efficiencies of the impeller motion inside its housing. We have low loss because it's a DC drive, so we can operate very quickly from start to stop and it has high reliability and long life of service and of course the bearings are maintenance free. One of the key items that people were concerned about was the starting and the stopping of an of a aerostatic bearing because obviously at stop you are mechanical components resting together. So we have carried out over 7, 000, uh, sorry, 700,000 tests on our sister product at home back at Westwind and uh, with no degradation at all and we're running currently uh, a unit over there that's done over 400,000 cycles and currently at the show I think we're doing about 1,800 a day and it's still functioning correctly. Another benefit obviously of the air bearing is that we can run very fast and the graph there is just showing that if you had for the same kind of output a 150 millimeter impeller the faster we go we can obviously keep the same performance, but we could theoretically reduce the size of the impeller. So from 150 millimeters, we could come down to a 50 millimeter impeller and still have the same performance if you were running from 20K to 80K. So there's a lot of opportunity with our high speed product to be able to produce good airflow um, in a compact size, which might be very important in later time for automotive um, and other stationary um, CHP applications. So here's a, a few photos just of the unit that we have. We have this one is on the stand currently. Um, down here we have a coin to give uh, the size of one of the units we have back at Westwind. Unfortunately, that's a, a British 50 pence piece. So about the same size as a two euro coin would be a, a good comparison. Now we're here in Europe. And here's a, a, a GA, if you like, or a breakdown of the, of the current unit that we're running on the stand. Probably the color item is the one to look at. So, so this shaft assembly, we are supporting on its journal bearings radially, it's, it's floating in air, and it's positioned axially with this thrust runner at the front. The impeller is obviously here, and this is running in its impeller casing, where the air is drawn in and then pushed out through the output. It has a permanent magnet motor on the back, and the current one that we're running, as I say, is, is a 70k unit. Over on the stand, we have some brochures which have the same graph as this. It's just showing the output for the prototype unit that we have, that we're running, um, just at the different speeds. And since our visit to the fuel cell show last year, we've had a couple of new developments. So we're working currently at Westwind on bigger units, because there seems to be a need for this in an aerostatic format. We have a project with another partner where we're doing some um, regeneration of energy um, through spent exhaust gases. So there's a lot of opportunity for air bearings and how they might fit. Anyway, I thank you very much for your patience. I'm sorry about the technical issues. And whilst I have chance, I'd also like to, to thank Tobias Rents and his team, especially the technical guys, for all their support during the show this year. So thanks very much, and thanks to all of you. Hope you enjoyed it. Wow, thank you very much. Also from my side, I very much appreciate the compliment. Also compliment to you. What an interesting presentation. Do we have questions at this time? 
Say no, please, because I'm the sales guy. You want the technical guys, and look, they're sitting over there. They need to be kept busy whilst well, I have a chance to walk around the show. So you <laughs> have the chance to take all of your questions to the booth, and it's right across the corner, so you can even take your coffee across the corner at booth number C34. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody. We'll have a break here in the technical forum at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit. We'll come back in an hour. We'll present you the test systems for an analysis of air supply system in fuel cells in automotive use. For that, please come back here at 3.20. Other than that, have a seat, enjoy, relax, your and have a coffee. Thank you.